All right. Good morning. Uh, we are live. Awesome, everybody. Welcome to this session. Uh, I'm Alexis, your host, and I'm joined by the lovely Nigiri, direct from Kenya. Um, hi, Nigiri. How are you? Hey, guys. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. So say hello in the chat. Say from where you are you coming from. Uh, what do you do? It will help us. Uh, we'll give you a little poll in a few in a few seconds. Um, I mean, it's the third hour and a half of the twenty four hour, and it's it will be a short session. So I'll do a very very quick intro, uh, just to wrap up, and so injury have the more time for the 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 tech. So quick wrap up, you have some options to uh, uh, to add like emoticons when she speaks. You have a subtitle caption, uh, which is automatic, sometimes a bit buggy, and you can select the quality of the video at the bottom as well. Uh, leave your question in the Q&A uh, so you can upvote every, everything and we can get going. Thanks uh, everybody to be here. Uh, and thanks, Nigiri, uh, to share your wisdom with uh, the group. And I'll just disappear uh, myself. <laughs> okay. Cool. Thank you, uh, Alexis. So I'll just share my screen for my presentation um, real quick. All right. Um, cool. Here we go. Great. So product design as a shared resource. Um, welcome to 24 hours of UX. Um, it's going to be like a full day of non -stop planning for UX. And I think that's great. I think I'm always excited about these things because you get to hear something from everyone from the rest of the world, all the communities. So why did I choose this topic? Um, we shall see very shortly because this happens more often than you think. Great. So who am I? <laughs> Well, I identify as a UXer. Um, I sit in many roles here and there. Uh, so currently, I'm the design studio manager at Microsoft. Uh, previously, I was a UX lead at Africa Stalking, which is a startup uh, down here in Kenya. And then also, I'm the founder and co-organizer of UX Kitchen, which is the community that's bringing you the stock. So I'm the representative today. And then I've been a UX instructor at a place called Akili Plus as well. All right. So. Um, the agenda today, somehow in 30 minutes, I am going to 30 minutes, great. I am going to be able to introduce why why this topic, what what's a shared resource, um, and how to know that product design is a shared resource in your organization and why this is important. And then also how to go about it when it comes to the team, the projects, and ops. Um, cool. So shared resource. What is a shared resource? Think of HR, think of finance. Think of accounting, I guess finance and accounting is <laughs> maybe same wing. Yeah, so a shared resource means that you're a reference point for the rest of the organization. So what this looks like in the product world is that most of the projects that, most of the work that your team does is very project based, not product based. And the difference would be, so say for example, we have a company that has three main products and each product has a team attached to it. So there's like development, there's engineering, um, there's design, there's PMs and all that. And then in another scenario where there's, um, there's like three projects, but we, we have like engineering teams to those projects. But then for the design team, it's like, like one team across the entire, the entire scope of like all the products that they have. So that's how you know it's a shared resource. And why does this happen often? It's because as much as design has done great steps to get to um, where we are at right now, it's still picking up. It's not considered as core as engineering and that's a mistake, right? However, that's the situation. So what do we do about it, right? How do we go, how do we create um, space for design uh, when there's not enough resources? Okay, so this is how you know that product design is a shared resource in your in your company or in your organization. So consider this part as you know how those blogs and tabloids are like how to know you are in a how to relationship, and then it's like um, number seventeen is a shocky. <laughs> so some, it's it's like you didn't already know, right? But here are your here are your pointers to know that product design is is a shared resource in your organization. So one is your design team dealing with a million projects at a time. That's a pointer. 
Um, are people not exactly sure what the design team does, but they look like the cool kids, so they get a pass. They're like, I, I don't know what you do, but like, you know, it's cool. So that's also a, a pointer that you, you, your, your team, your product design might be a shared resource. And then there's um, the design team always seemingly has a closer deadline than the other team. So it's like they're rushed, they're rushed more and they're not given enough time and all that. And then the design team is also like low key popular because everyone has interacted with them at some point. That's because everyone goes to them for something, right? And then there's that other guy who no one knows because not everyone goes to them. And then there's an easy scapegoat for lazy projects. So like when something's not um is not done on time, it's like, oh, I gave it to the product design team and um the progress has not moved. So they're like then they're an easy scapegoat when something is not ready. And then um they seem more unfulfilled than fulfilled. So there's a lack of a shared vision. And the reason this happens in a product design team is because they're constantly working on so many things. So there's no shared vision. There's no product or something that the whole group is working towards. So that's also a point of that. It's a shared resource. Great. So what are the must haves when you realize now that you know that you are in a space where design is a product design is a shared resource? What are the must haves uh, for this to go right? So one, you need a playbook for different outputs. So, so for example, um, if your work looks like this brand, this brand work, uh, so those could be that could be logos, color scheme, and all that. And then there's UX, uh, this UX work that's like uh, fleshing out the concept. And then there's UI work, which is aesthetics, and there's comms, so let's say social media and all that. Um, you should have playbooks. So, and this is not like mighty pages of like uh, this is what we do every step. This is just something it can it can literally be a one pager. Something that the team knows when it's brand work, this is where we start, this is the process, and this is where it ends. Um cool. So for the next thing is education of the processes to the rest of the organization. So what that looks like is remember how we said a pointer is when the team, when the rest of the organization is not exactly sure what you guys do. That's that's that, that's another thing. So educate the rest of the company what it is you do, so that they have a they have an understanding of what to expect uh, when they come and say, um, please help me get this done. It's not like they want you to be, oh, it's it's gonna be ready in two hours. Or it's just design. It's just design. Why is it taking long longer than two days? So that they know that. But this is taken care of when you educate the rest of the team. And then there's a prioritization metric. For example, since there, there's always going to be like so many projects, uh, you need to know how to prioritize. So one, you could say if something, if a request comes from the C-suite, so let's say someone from the C-suite is going to speak in two days and maybe that has to go to the top of the work. So that's a prioritization metric. Then there's first come, first serve. So let's say, oh, this guy's asked for this project before this other guy. That's, that's um, simple to explain. And then there's non-negotiable. So for example, we are going to launch this product on Friday and there's a few things that need to be ready because we are not going to move the launch date. That's a non-negotiable. And there could be many others, but these are just some examples. And then you need to have strong no's. So for example, if someone is requesting for something that's not been validated in the market yet, be have a team or like a lead of the team that can say, um, we're not going to implement this. And be, because one, two, three, you know, it's not personal, it's just, when you look at objectively the resources we have, um, the things that um, are needed in the next one week, we cannot we cannot uh, provide what you're asking for in the next week. So maybe in the next month, or actually go to the market, do some more research, and then talk to us, right? Something like that. And then there's monthly feedback Fridays. You want to ensure that this team is constantly overwhelmed. So you want to ensure that they're feeling hard and listened to. So you could do like every once a month, there's a feedback Friday where guys just say, oh, this is bothering me. And it's not like about even work, like you're not planning work or like reviewing work. You're just asking guys how they're feeling about how the month has been and how work has been going on. Yeah. And then a way out. Remember, having product design as a shared resource is not the end goal. So you need to have plans to grow the team, to uh, plan work better and all that. So yeah. Cool, so let's go to the team. So when it comes to the team, um, assume you have someone like a brand designer and then you have a UX designer and you have a UI designer, um, or sometimes you even have like a full scope product designer. So that's like a unicorn. And then maybe oh, let's even say it ends there. So one, know your resource needs very well. Know, um, Say you have a full scope product designer. What it is that they're really, what is it that they're really good at? So, what part of the projects are you going to share with this person? And then, who's good at the other thing? Also, know what you don't have. So, when you're posting, so let's say when you're hiring 
and you have a job description, be very clear on what it is the team needs at the moment, what it is you don't have, um, who's very overwhelmed and what is it that they're good at and how can you complement this. Um, then the next part is the culture. So you have to prioritize kindness over micromanagement. In a space where you don't have enough resources, people are constantly going to be overwhelmed. And if they feel like they don't have the freedom to work, like they're not being trusted, that of course that's gonna like destroy the mood and you don't want unhappy people to do work. It's not gonna be good work, right? You also don't want a workplace where people are not feeling motivated. So in such, when you realize um, you're dealing a lot with like design as a shared resource, you want to show trust, you want to make people comfortable, you want to make them feel like um, work is almost, it's not a, it's not a call, like it's not something that they have to do, something they enjoy doing. And that's by creating an environment they want to be around, right? The other thing is today I learned, um, whereby it's like um so what happens in a product design setting um that is a shared resource is that people often feel like they're a soap factory what this means is like you're constantly getting work and putting it out constantly getting in work and putting it out so guys are not learning and remember if you have a team that's very like competitive like as a person i want to feel like i'm growing my skills um I want to feel like I am on top of the trends of the industry. And if I'm constantly putting out work, I'm not in charge of that. So an easy way I found to do this is whenever we have weekly standups, one of the things that people talk about, and it's not a must uh, so that people don't feel pressured, but one of the things that we encourage is today I learned, <laughs> I found this on Reddit. Um, so what that looks like is that I'll come here and I'll say, hey, I learned how to use a fig jam file. Uh, and this is this is two things I can teach you guys. You can even give someone like a five minute presentation if they'd like. So that way, even when they're overwhelmed by with work during the rest of the week, um, they can be like, oh, I learned something. So there's always like a constant flow of new information. Hey, Nigeria, sorry to interrupt. I think the deck yeah. went off. Uh, oh, yeah? It disappeared, yeah. So just to let you know that uh, like okay. people are not seeing it. So maybe okay, probably let's... just it, it jumped in. So I'll let you right. just reach there and wait for, for this to have come back. Uh, cool. Thank you for letting me know. Let me try this again. Um, projects present. Can you see it now? Uh, yes, now it's good. Okay, perfect. Great. I'll leave you to it. Yeah, great. Thank you for letting me know. No um, cool. Uh, so what we just discussed is what to do with the team. So know what they know who's good at what and what you need. And then culture, prioritize kindness and create a work environment that's great. And then today I learned is make the team feel like they're not constantly putting out work and not growing their skills. So just like a weekly thing where people learn, people say what they learned. Let's move to projects. So for projects, when you're planning work, decide, decide outputs together and then attach to calendar invites. What this looks like is that um, when we say we are starting a new project today, just be like, what is expected as an output of this project? So there's going to be, for example, again, brand work, uh, let's say a brand guide. Uh, there's going to be for UX, it's going to be, let's say, user stories and like a user flow. And then for UI, there's going to be a prototype, like a high fidelity prototype. These are outputs. So you have to attach them to calendar invites. So that looks like we need to have a prototype by 15th of this month and then on that 15th. And then it's not like something that from up down, everyone's deciding this. And then you send out calendar invites. So at the back of people's minds, it's always like this is expected on this date. So that's what that part means. And then there's owning the work. There's, um, so for owning the work, you, you're constantly going to work together because it's just like one design team, but then always have a point person. So let's say there's like um, two or three projects going on and there's an output to, to all this. Attach that, attach an output to a point person. So for example, be like, Onjiri, you know, you're good at, you're good at UX. So you're the person we ask about when it's time to present. Um, the prototype, something like that, yeah. And then there's uh, reviews. So reviews is combining design feedback with celebrating the team's effort over formation. So what that means is that every time we are reviewing people's work, remember to tell them they're doing a good job. 
So be like, it's not only, oh, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? I think we could do this better. And that's okay too. But remember to couple that with, thank you guys for taking care of, for taking care of um, this part of the project. Thank you guys for doing this on Guta. Thank you guys. This research looks really cool. Like just words of affirmation, which is like a love language. Um, it also counts when it comes to like a workplace because you want a team that feels seen, that they feel hard. It's not just work output. Cool. So we go to the last part, which is ops. Yay! I'm on time. <laughs> so for the ops part of things, if you're running a team that's constantly overwhelmed, there's constantly so much work to do to present. Um, there's pressure from the rest of the organization because they're not again, they're not exactly sure what you guys do. They just expect that it's delivered. Um, they also don't think it's as core as engineering. These are all the like small things small psychological things to think about then you need you need a machine that's very well oiled so what ops looks like is have a rhythm of the month so what does that mean it means like if someone in the team closes their eyes they can tell you what happens in a month they can tell you they're going to have um a weekly stand up then they can tell you every two weeks they're going to have like product reviews because for example portions of work take about two weeks and then they can tell you that every once a month they have team rituals so that's the uh, feedback friday we were talking about so if there's a rhythm of expectation of work they don't feel lost because things are not coming as much as things are coming in from everywhere they don't they are not that they're not like uh, it's not murky there's an expectation of what's going to happen for the next month so that's what rhythm of the month means when it comes to tools you probably want to use one design tool for a similar output what does that mean? It means that if for UX and UI, if, if, when UX and UI is the output, um, use one tool. So don't be like, there's a, there's a part of the team that uses Adobe XD. There's a part of the team that uses, um, I don't know, something else. So um, for example, you could use Figma. And then there's, um, and ensure it's a collaborative tool because you don't want a situation where um, guys cannot comment, um, someone's laptop couldn't, open so no one has access to the file such things and then there's um, branding again you can use another product but just make sure when the output is one the design tool is one and you can also use one design tool for everything for example i've seen teams that use figma even for communication for slides and all that so that's uh, that's for tools and then for the resource center it means that you see there's always going to be documentation and then there's actual design files so for the documentation what you do is meticulously organize this so and all it's, it has to be like on a drive so if you if your organization uses google make sure you're using you're making very good use of google drive uh if it's uh, microsoft it's um it's one drive and then um and any other right so how you organize files is that create projects and under those projects create output folders so for example let's say the project is called Lanish. So if the product is called Laneige, under Laneige you'll have like output one is UX and then that's a new folder. Is you is UI another folder? Is so that when I come to that folder, I'm not lost about where where what is, right? And then for the design files again, uh, usually we use Figma at Microsoft. So you go to Figma and you will see that. Um, for this one team or for this one project, this is everything you might ever need. Even if someone presented something on slides, this is where you'll find it. So just meticulously organize things because you're constantly doing a lot at once. Cool. So in the case that that wasn't very convincing <laughs> or you didn't grasp that very well, these are the things you need to ask yourself when you realize your product design is a shared resource. Number one, so we divide that into the work and the team. And number one is how do we decide goals as a team? Make sure that's, again, a well-oiled machine. How do we plan work? That's what are the tools you're using to plan work? Uh, what are the timelines? What does um, what's needed and by who? How do we do the work? So again, the tools, the processes, the playbooks. How do we do reviews? How often? This could be like um, every two weeks. Um, and what's needed? Like have a have a template of sorts so that it's not um, you're not deciding on the day off. You're deciding okay, this is this is the person who's gonna present and this is how the presentation is gonna go. What's our handover process? Uh, when it comes to product design, there's always a partner somewhere. So you're either working with engineering, uh, marketing, um, let's even go with those two. So what does handover look like um, for engineering, for example? So again, collaborative tools, um, explaining your prototypes beforehand, um, answering questions. And, and then there's also like the design QA, which is different from handover. So design QA means that, um, so once the product is actually live 
um, already from the engineering team. There's the part of the design team that goes and sees, did they build what we had recommended? There's that because the user is going to have to deal with that again. Then when it comes to the team, the questions to ask yourself is how do you celebrate our work just to keep your team motivated? Uh, it could be on a blog. It could be how you do launches and such stuff. How do you uphold camaraderie? So it's like um, the feedback Fridays, like a virtual party is now that now that we're in the middle of a pandemic. Is the team happy? So again, are they feeling hard? Listen to, are they growing? And then is the team growing their skills? So this is technical bit. How do you ensure that they're not a soap factory? Things are moving um, for their personal skill level. Yeah. And then are we working towards a more sustainable way of working? Remember, design as a shared resource is not the end goal. It should never be. Um, so uh, what are the small things we are doing, even with our few resources, to make sure that everything's being taken care of? And in the future, like in like six months, it's not going to be the same scenario. In one year, things are moving. Like, you know, the team has grown. Projects are taking, um, are taking like a life of their own because they have more hands, uh, more hands on the team. Cool. So again, remember, as much as this was a guide on how to do design as a shared resource, the ideal scenario would be design is engineering. We want to consider, we want the rest of the organization to consider that design is engineering. It's, it's very core to the product and organization success. And the problem is we can't complain that they don't think it's, it's, um, it's core. It's our job as UXers, it's our job as the designers on the team to actually make a case for design. So remember to always um, have a seat at the table. Remember to have your voice heard. Remember to show them the, the value of this part of the product work. All right, and then the next part is design needs time. So there's this thing I've seen <laughs> when design is a shared resource where when a project is, is being planned for, they're like engineering, three to four months, or like, I don't know, four to six months. And then design is given, I don't know, two weeks. <laughs> it's wild, right? Because there's so much work that goes into deciding what's the concept we are building. So remember to always have a time budget for design. And that is not crazy. That is not, it's not, it's not like two weeks or a week. Yeah. So um, know what the output is expected and make time for those outputs. And then design needs money. Allocate project budgets and hire, hire, hire. When it comes to project budgets, when it, people skimp on user research, so the first part and they're like, ah, guys already know what they want. No, 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 no. Put budgets onto user research because that's the only way you're going to have great insights to build a great, uh, a great product. And then hiring. Again, which is always a conversation, it's, e it's always easier to hire an engineer than it is to hire a, a designer. Make sure that case is being made every every chance you get. So be like, okay, these are, these are the needs we have as, as resource. This is what we currently have, and this is what we don't have, and this is what we need to hire for. Yeah. So um, always make the case to C-suit. And if you're part of the C-suit, th this, 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 this is your message. Please make time for design because it's very critical to your success. Cool. So prioritizing this design is prioritizing success, as you can see. Um, I always put a quote. <laughs> yeah. So by failing to prepare, we are failing to by failing to prepare, we are preparing to fail. So if you ignore design, um, success shall be ignored. Yeah. All right. So that's me, and I'm gonna stop sharing and hope. <laughs> Alexis is back. Cool. Yay! <laughs> well, it takes some time to load. Perfect. Thanks, Nju, for your talk. Uh, well, we have still five minutes. So if you want to take one or two questions, it will be good. Uh, I'll do my outro announcement already, which is in five minutes, uh, you have a next talk. Uh, it's like uh, a keynote. So it's like uh, it will be the only one available. Um, and you just yeah, need to go in the hermit in five minutes. So now just let me hide and please answer the question, Jerry, uh, feel free uh, to go. Uh, I'll just unmute myself. Cool. Thank you, Alexis. Thank you, Alexis. Um, so we have, when there's no new product, an engineering team is busy with bug fix daily. What can design team focus on? And that's a good question. So I guess that's the opposite of what we assumed, which is when you're not overwhelmed with work, what do you do? So usually what happens is I do usability tests. So remember, testing is not like the end of the design process. Testing continues forever. So 
I'll take the product to an, another user, figure out what, what should be our next iterations, uh, probably update the design system, which is something that people constantly ignore. So when it comes to UI and design is a shared resource, again, you, you want to be ready. So you don't create icons from scratch, right? Um, so you update the design system. Um, that's, that's, that's top of it for me. Um, I hope that answered your question and then cool. Okay, okay, cool. What's the difference between design QA and design review? So I'd mentioned this. So design review is basically, there's an idea here. So let's say it's a new idea um, or even it's an old idea and you want to improve the project. A design review is how have we changed uh, what currently exists to what's, a, what's an ideal scenario when it comes to the product um, user flows and what the product is, the value it's giving to the user. So when you present a prototype, you're presenting to the stakeholders, the team, and they're like, okay, so this is what we've decided to go to go with as a concept. That's design review, right? Design QA is basically, now it's already been handed over, engineering has done its thing, and then now the product is out. But then you go and realize, ah, these are not the icons I give. Oh, this flow does not do this. This prototype is not working the way it's supposed to be. So basically, the design, the engineering team has not implemented design as was given. So that's a design QA, and we need to do both always, right? Because if the wrong product ends up with a with a user, and you did your work as a design, you still failed as a designer. Cool. So that's from Lewis, and then, um, okay. Can you give some examples of what you do as a design studio manager at micro at Microsoft? Cool. So my role there is I'm in charge of three charters. So the charters are, um, so the, the whole thing is called FAST. The studio is called FAST and FAST has three charters. So the charters under FAST is people, um, feed and such. So those are products or part of products that run across the M M365 core products. So what that means is that there'll be a UX, there'll be a UX team attached to, luckily there's like UX teams attached to those different charters. So, and then there's also like design managers. So part of the things I do is basically ensure that one, our, our product somehow, also I just turned, <laughs> so I'm still figuring it out, but our products under those three charters are reaching the market in the ways that we need them to provide value to the users. And then, so there's a product pitch to things. And then there's also the operations things to things, which is, is a studio running correctly? Are guys happy, you know? Um, are we doing reviews again? Um, how, what's the process we have? Cause you, you'll find that these different charters, they have different ways of working cause they are like separate teams, right? But are we working in ways that talk to each other for the studio to run properly because the, the products are the same at the end of the day. Yeah. So um, that's that. <clears throat> Should design QA be conducted in staging before product release or is it after? Definitely before, because you don't want to release something that has not been um, reviewed by the design, by the designers, not engineering, by the designers. Yeah. So thank you for that in turn. And then, okay. <laughs> so Karen says, uh, good sharing. I have a feeling many areas that you have stated as the organization is stretching all of us. That's very true. Honestly, as a designer in any organization, there's a chance you're being stretched. There's a very big chance you're being stretched. And that's because just of the nature of the industry, it's still growing, but we've done big steps. So I see, I see how this might not be a conversation in five years, right? But it is a conversation right now. So how do you go about it? So I agree with you, Karen. What are the examples of the playbooks around brand UX, UI, comms? That's from Lewis. So for that, I usually customize playbooks. So you'll find that um, depending on how a team likes to work or the nature of the problems that you're solving, you will have a different organization can have a different playbook. So that's basically, um, you can create one yourself, depending on also the resources you have. You see, there's a team that's going to have a brand UXer, uh, sorry, a brand designer, a UXer, a UI. And then there's another team that's going to have just one product designer or like two product designers that are, that are unicorns. So you see the playbook is going to be different in that case. Um, so that's what I would say. Yeah, um, I think that's mostly it. Okay, cool. 
So this last one uh, by Anne Joroge, how would you advise teams to go about bulldozing since there, there is little room for strong no's? Example, um, the C-suit founders' decisions override input from the design team. Okay, so yeah, that's tricky. It's always tricky because again, sometimes you're not the manager. So saying no is difficult. What I would say is communicate and educate. Um, it's not going to happen overnight, but what you should do is, first of all, tell your immediate senior um, if there's a structure for that. Tell them that this is not working for you and these are the suggestions you have towards working better. And then educate is educating the rest of the team. So if you guys have like town halls where the rest of the company comes in, tell them how these things work and how best you can deliver your output. Um, that's what I would say right now. The other way, which would be best, when you finally do the presentation to the rest of the organization, have hard facts. So for example, statistics. Be like, investing in design is going to move our product from metric A to metric B. That's when you get the C-suits uh, interested because sometimes the c does not even understand, understand design. They don't even care as much, right? They care about the things maybe again engineering finances and stuff like that so if you can tie it to something that they would care about then design starts to make sense to tell them this is failing because um our product adoption uh is at uh let's say this is probably a horrible number but like 40 percent. we want to move it to 70 percent. and part of the problems we have are the flow of the of the of the product and such stuff so if you can put numbers or things they care about and attach that to the value of product design, then you will win eventually. Not overnight, but you will win. Um, cool. All right, so I guess Alexis, you can come back and we could do the outro. And thanks again, guys, from um, this is UX Kitchen. And fun fact, I'm actually not in Nairobi, which is where UX Kitchen is based, but I'm still in Kenya. So this is Malindi. Um, yeah, it was really lovely to be here. Yeah, thanks, Nigeria, for your talk. It was awesome. So I'm <laughs> just reminded now I'm pinning your uh, deck to the chat. So if you okay. want to find Nigeria's deck, it's in the chat. It will be on the top. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for your lovely talks. It was amazing. Uh, now, uh, I would say, what do, do I need to say? Sorry. <laughs> now <laughs> it's like, it's time for the keynote. Um, and it's at 10, it's about design sprint. Uh, I guess it was a last minute change. Uh, but then if you want to cool down, we also have a networking area. Uh, and also there is a podcast, uh, 24 minutes of UX that you can find as well um, online. Just Google it. So thanks for your time. Hope you enjoy the rest of the day. So many talks again, and maybe see you around uh, a bit later. Bye. Bye guys, thank you. Thank you. Thanks.